Hello and welcome to Agent Power Virtual Agents. This is our fifth episode and we're going to talk about step-by-step -step authentication. Now authentication is required if you don't want to give away information without verifying a user. If let's say they belong to your organization or not, um, that's where we would need it. Coming up right after the intro. So let's jump right into it. And what I'll talk about is step-by-step -step authentication. Now, at first, when you look at it, you feel like that this is not something you can do if you are part of the no-code way and you don't want to look into the technical side of things. Uh, but Microsoft has made it easy for you. So, and let me tell you how. So what we are going to do is follow the steps I've got on my screen. Um, okay, so number one is go to manage and click on authentication. So let me go to um, my PBA. So this is home and you know under manage, you've got authentication, right? So this is where you click. Now when you click on it, you see all these um, fields to be filled in um, where you have no idea how to populate them. Because to be honest, this is related to Azure um azure ad um authorization and that's where you don't want to do it um if you don't know the technical side of azure um i would not classify it as a technical slide if you're unaware that's where you can say that but actually it is just config so you just have to configure a few things and you'll be able to get everything now the connection name is something any logical name you want to provided you can do that. Rest all, we will see how we can do. Now, a very important thing here, why I said Microsoft has made it easy for you because they have provided you this link. And if you if you'll click on that, you will see that most of the information they have provided on this page, right? So you can click on that too and fit some information. Correct. Um, now the next step, for me was, let me go back to the slide deck. And we have clicked on authentication. We have seen uh, the Microsoft uh, docs.microsoft link there. If you want to learn more and get some idea, it's, it's basically a cheat sheet, I'm telling you, and you'll get to know uh, in a few minutes why I'm saying that. And on top of that, I have not done this before, so I'm going to try it with you. Uh, this is my first time doing it. Um, so I have created steps so that there, if there are people like me who have never done it before, they can follow the steps here and do the same. Um, okay, so the next one is, so I'm talking about pre-filled um, fields here, as well as optional fields, right? So let's look at them. Pre-filled field here is service provider. Now, this is because only this type of authentication is acceptable by uh, PVA. So Microsoft has clearly um, somewhere here. So this field cannot be edited because Power Virtual Agents only supports generic OAuth to providers, um, which includes Facebook as well, based on what is written here. Um, and the second field was scope. Right, now you would need to use scopes um, for, let's say if you've got Dynamics 365 instance or you've got users who want to access CDS information. And why I'm saying that, let's say uh, the example I gave in the previous episode, which was, what was it? Um, Power Automate uh, and variables. So there we were fetching information from invoices, uh, the amount, the customer, due date, etc. So that's basically coming out from your CDS database and that's where you would use scopes. Now, if you've got a chatbot which is only replying to FAQs, you might not need it, right? So that's why it's optional. Um, we have looked into right now, 
what have we covered out of all of this is connection name, service provider, and scopes. Okay, so let me give it a name here. Connection name DIYD365, Microsoft Azure. Okay, I'll give it this name. Um, rest I'll leave blank as of now. Moving back to the next step. Okay, the next step, which is a very important step where you must have access to Azure. Now, how you can get it when you're logged into your PVA in the next tab, open portal.azure.com, right? And if you have not yet uh, created a sign-in, just click on sign-in and it will ask you, uh, it will give you free few prompts and you will be able to access it. So I'll repeat the URL once more. Once more, portal.azure.com. So let me go back and show it to you. This is that portal and this is what I'm talking about, portal.azure.com, right? Once you have logged in, you'll uh, land into this page. Okay, let me just go back to the slide so I'm not missing anything, no. Okay, so once you log in, you land into this page and now what you need to do is you look at this Manage Azure. Active Directory, right? I'll click on view here. So when I click on view, everything should be blank. DIYD365 <clears throat> is, my, is my organization name, so it's coming there as overview. Um, the next step is registering your app and how you can do that is, so you land into the homepage, click on manage AD, um, and then you will come to this page and here's where we are going to talk about a few more fields which are required for the authentication configuration in Power Virtual Agents, right? So going back, um, so these are our steps here. Azure Portal, you get access to that. Then you need to register your app, get a client ID, get a client secret, and then this is an additional step, add permissions, which is not uh, part of the configuration in the PVA, but obviously you need it to be able to um, grant access and all such things. And then read very URL as well. So let's do it one by one. Before that, let's look at where they are required. So client ID is required here, client secret is required here. Um, and yep, those are the two we will populate from, from the Azure portal. Now, number one was registration of your app. So you go to, you are here, and then you click on app registration, and I'll say new registration, um, DIYD365 bot, okay. Now, who can use this application or access this API? This is important. Uh, I only want to give permission to uh, people who are part of my tenant, which is DIYD365 only. You have got other options as well. If you've got multi-tenant um, scenario, you can pick from that. Now, redirect URL. This is this is a good one. And why I'm saying that, because when you look at it, you aren't sure that what to provide as a URL here, right? It does sales you something. The easiest way is to go to docs.microsoft.com, right? And copy that. So let me go back to my slide deck and I've copied it from docs.microsoft.com. So I'll just pick that up. That's why I was saying that's like a cheat sheet because they've made it easier for you. All I've done for app registration till now is provided it a name, selected my account type options and copied a redirect URL. All I had to do now is click register. So I click on register. It's creating the application and you immediately see a client ID is created. That is very cool. The second part of this was getting client secret, right? Um, there was, there were two more things. So first was registration of your app. Second was generating a client ID. So two of those we have completed. Third was client secret, we are yet to do. Uh, fourth was permissions, we are yet to do. Uh, fifth was redirect URL, which we have done, okay? While registering the app itself. 
Now, in order to uh, generate a client secret, you can see now we are in our app, which we have just registered. And here we have got certificates and secrets. Now I've got no certificates. So I'll look for client secrets and all it asks you to do is create a new client secret. Okay. And it expires in one year. You can select never two year. These are the three options. I will say DIYD365 bot here as well and add it. Then I can see the secret, right? Now what we'll do before we do anything else, we'll just quickly copy it and paste it here, right? Go back there, go back to overview of the app and get the client ID from here. So you can click here and copy it as well. Go back to PVA and paste it. So we've got two of them now. The next one is permission. So um, I think, should it be here? API permissions, yeah. So let me go back to my slide deck and show you. So the last one, user.read is generated by default. You would need two more and a Y to sign users in. The second one, we need to read users profile. So we'll just quickly create them. Copy it from here, go back, add a permission. And we want to add it for, so, okay, so CDS isn't there. Is it there? No, it's not there. So we will select Dynamic CRM in our case, right? And select this. Permission user impersonation. I was about to get to this one towards the end, but it seems like I have to do it now. Okay, let's add permissions. That's added. Add a permission. Microsoft Graph. I'll use this. Application permission. Um, what was on premise user dot read so one was user dot read dot all and the other one was all right that's why we were not able to find it because we were looking at application permissions while open id is something which has delegated permissions so we will say sign users in, delegated permissions, add permission. Right now to all of that, we, we will just grant admin consent for DIYD365 and let's do it. Let me repeat it again, add a permission. We went and added dynamic CRM permission for user impersonation. So if, if they want to access information from my CDS or CRM, um, they will have to um, auto log in or authorized by the bot. Uh, then we went to Microsoft Graph. Application permissions, we have added um, user.read.all, which was under, I think, user. So user.read.all. And then we went to delegated permissions and we said, uh, open ID to sign in users, right? So we have done that. Now that part is done, which is good. Now, which one was left? Uh, we've generated client secret, client ID, uh, created the app, redirect URL, added permission. So our slide, this one is completed. Now we move on to the next one. This is all the information from docs.microsoft.com, okay? Um, everything you see here on the right is actually copied from there. The link is here and is actually, this is all static information. That's why I said it's a cheat sheet. You can just copy and paste it. So let's start the process and start doing it. Uh, authorization URL query string templates. I'll control AC this. 
and go back to query string template, this one, and paste that. Now, the next one was token URL. It's a question mark. Um, refresh URL. It's a question mark as well. So token URL question mark. Refresh URL question mark. And for where scope less delimiter, it was a comma. Now we have almost filled all of them except for four. So authorization URL template, token URL template, token body template, and refresh URL template. Oh, actually there's a fifth one, refresh body template as well. So going back to the slide, we've got refresh body template here, copy it and token body template there. So go back, refresh, body template here, copy token body template from here. Now we've got refresh URL template and token URL template and authorization URL template. And that's our next slide, which is remaining fields for authorization are these four where scope is an optional field. So authorization URL template, it says go to overview, go to endpoints and copy the authorization endpoint, okay? Cool. We'll go back to Azure portal and we will go to overview of our registered app. And then you see this button here called endpoints. So I click on endpoints. This is my authorization URL. So what I'll do is copy it copy it and go back to PVA, paste it here. And then go back here. I've got, which one is ending from token? This second one. So I'll copy this one, go back here, copy the token URL template. And for refresh, you'll be surprised that it's actually same as token endpoint. So I'll copy it again here. Now, scope, because I've enabled user impersonation for Dynamics um, CRM and ERP, I need to provide scope here. So you can leave it blank as well and try it, but I'll actually provide it. So let's see what's my org URL. And I must have it here and to, at the end, I just have to add user underscore impersonation. And let me just quickly copy it, go back, put it in the scope, and we'll hit save, okay? Okay, before moving further or hitting save here, I'll tell you the process steps once again. So you go to manage, click on authentication, provide it a connection name, service provider is pre-filled, so you don't have to do anything and then you've got scope depending on whether you're using CDS or Dynamics 365 CE, etc. You might need this. Um, the next step was is creating a login on portal.azure.com, which is here. Once you've done that, you land into the home page, you click on manage uh, Azure AD, click on view, and then you go and register your app by clicking app registration. In the app registration, then you click on new registration like this, provided the name, supported account types, and redirect URL you copy from docs.microsoft.com. I'll go here. Once I've done that, our client ID is generated, and then I went to certificates and secrets and generated a client secret. Along with that, I also provided some permissions for my Dynamics CRM, which was user impersonation. And that's why I'm using the URL of my org and then suffixing this under uh, after the URL, I'm using scope. So that, so I added user.read.all and open ID for sign-in. Um, and we completed that step. And after that, we moved on to copying some fields from the docs.microsoft.com thing. Uh, all of them are listed here. I'll provide the description in my blog as well, so you can copy paste. 
um, then we were to copy the endpoints which were available on my apps overview click on endpoints copy the first one uh, for authorization second one for token and second one for refresh as well now we'll go back to pva and hit save okay no spaces or special characters allowed so i'll just do it this way and hit save once it's saved it's saving let's wait for it and then we'll have to go back to topics and create, add the action called authorize, right? Let's wait for the save to happen. I will say never. The connection was successfully saved. Make sure to test it. Now we'll go to topics and we will create a new topic. Sign me in and save topic. And I'll just have some trigger phrases here. Login, sign in just for the sake of it. Then I'll go to altering canvas, cancel, go to the error. Okay. And here, I will type in my message first and save it. And then we'll call an action from here. So in previous episode, in the previous episode, you saw that you can call an action and there was flow available uh, there for creation as well as for adding. Along with that, there was another thing which was authenticate so i'll click here and say call an action and it should ask me it, sh it would show me the authenticate action here so let me quickly select that and as soon as you select that you see all these steps are added by default right so it's it has done all of that thing now i'll hit save and we will test it. So I'll just say login. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's clashing with my other topic. Why are there no trigger phrases? Added trigger phrases. Sign in. So for some reason it didn't save. Log in. Save. Okay. Author in Canvas. Just to check. Yeah, everything else is fine. Let's try login now. Okay, so it has done this part. It says, show our moment, please. That was my message. And then it shows us a login card here. So if I click on it, it goes to another tab and this is where I'll get a token. So remember we were talking about to token URL, access, etc. I've now got a token here. I can click copy and I tell that to my bot. Okay, let's see what happens next. You're not logged in. so. That's working, the authentication is working. I'm not sure if I need to go to the slide deck once more. I'll go, so you can capture some screenshots there. I will also provide this information on my blog. Okay, so step-by-step -step authentication was the agenda. We went to the manage um, on left navigation pane and clicked on authentication. Then we talked about some fields which are optional or pre-populated. Service provider was pre-populated and then scopes is optional depending on your business use case. Then we created our login on portal.sure.com and registered our app, created which auto created the client ID, added some permissions. Then we also added 
uh, redirect URL when we were registering our app, although it was optional, but it's always easier if you've done everything beforehand. Uh, next was info from docs.microsoft.com, which is our cheat sheet in this case. All, all of these were present there and I just copied and pasted it. The link is on the bottom of your screen to go to that. Also, when you click on authenticate on your PVA, there's a link, learn more about it. So you can go from there as well. Now there were remaining fields, which we generated from the endpoint. So where we registered our app, when we go back there on top, it will show you a button called endpoint. And the first two are, which we used in three of them. The first one for authorization URL template, second one for token URL template, as well as for refresh URL template. Now scope for my organization, I got my organization's URL. And because I um, added permission for uh, Dynamics 365, I, I provided a suffix here, which is user underscore impersonation, and I put it in scope. Then we saved it, created a topic about login, and added the step called authenticate. I think that's what it was. Let's look at it. Authenticate. Yeah, so that's what we added. Cool. Well, if you come here often and watch my videos and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Give it a big thumbs up if it has solved your problem. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.